Hey, hey everybody. Uh, I'm David. Michael. Uh, we are from Aerial Influence. Today we're, you know, if you don't know us, first of all, we are drone dealers. Uh, we collaborate with all sorts of people, work with people from agriculture to search and rescue, public safety, that sort of thing. Uh, but we're trying to do a podcast every Friday. And since we've been doing this, we've been focusing mostly on agriculture. And for good reason, we've got some new drones out, Yeah, uh, which which is a big deal. The Agras T10, the Agras T30, everybody seems to have been... T20 is still going strong. Till the T20 is still out there as well. So today what we're doing, we've actually got uh, something on our website. It's called yep. the Agricultural... Drone Journey Map. Here, and I'm going to show you something. I made this today because the other weeks we've mentioned it. Come on. Oh, that didn't work. Sorry. I made a lower third for it, and now it's not showing up. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. So go to our website right there, aerialinfluence.com slash agriculture, uh, and that will get you to this journey map that we're talking about. Now, we put it out there. We're hoping that people went to the website already because i put it on all our social media so okay. some of you might have it at home where you can follow along or if you're listening to us on a podcast you can later go to the website and uh, get the information that you need and, and get this actual uh the whole journey map so yeah and th this is this is something that's um we tried to just stuff a bunch of information in there yeah um and i i mean i can go over you, you want to just pull it up yeah go yeah. ahead pull it up on your laptop all right so yeah, like David said, real quick, I'll, you know, you kind of scroll down here and then you start to see the agriculture stuff. And then if you hit the learn more, actually, it was, I think, get started. But anyways, right here, scroll down a little bit more and you get the download the journey map. So I did this before. I popped in our email. And basically, after you do that, it'll automatically pop this up. So this is the journey map. There's several pages that essentially are going to go step by step on what you need to do to be yeah. to be able to spray with your drone. Yeah, and it, and it's again, there's a lot of ways to kind of go about this because there's under 55, there's over over 55. So this is kind of a document that says, okay, you know, people might if if they're not into spraying already. They might be like, well, why do I need to do this? You know, right. or if I am spraying already, but I got, you know, backpack sprayer, I've got the general standards and maybe your commercial applicators license for pesticides. Why do you still need to get something else? And, right. and basically the bottom line comes in is that the tool that you're using, even though it's most likely just going to be 30 feet off the ground, you know, sometimes at the most, yeah, um, it's in the national airspace. Right. So, yes, something could happen, you know, the something goes haywire or whatever, um, you know, and you've got to have a basically a, a plan. Right. How, how am I going to mitigate the risk of me being up in the sky with with this drone? Yeah. So so this that what we put in there, um, you know, I would say the wording is kind of like uh, layman's terms or, you know, for, you know, anybody to understand. Um, then we, you know, scroll down and, and, and I'm, I'm just going to do kind of a broad overview right now. When you scroll down, we've got a ton of, uh, stuff from, you know, that you can go straight into the FAA to, for like general, um, FAA, uh, drone operation type stuff. Um, then all the way down into, you know, very specific, like, how do I do drone operations over 55 pounds, that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, and so I would go through, bottom. I would go through step by step on okay. it. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the general overview of, so the first part is, you know, understanding why you need a license. So we kind of went over that you're, you're needing a license because the FAA, basically the way that they judge whether or not you're qualified or not is certain certifications that you have. Right. Okay. So in the case of, uh, the FAA, they'd be like, okay, do you have your drone license? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got my drone license. Uh, what do you want to do with the drone? You know, I want to fly a, a drone that's 55 pounds, over 55 pounds, um, and I want to spray. Right. I want to use pesticide. So in order for that, they do have a step, you know, that 137 exemption kind of step, um, where it gets kind of difficult is that 
for the last you know hundred years, it's not. It's just been a plane, right? Or or you know, a helicopter. So so <laughs> if you haven't watched this every week, basically there's uh, something called the 137 from the FDA, FAA. You have to get an exemption from that to be able to spray pesticide from a drone. And essentially what that's saying is, you know, uh, it's just a, it's an exemption. Some of the things that are in uh, that FAA uh, essentially is saying that you have to wear a seatbelt or things related to flying an airplane. You have to get this exemption to be able to fly legally though, to right. be able to spray from a drone itself. Right. So. Yeah. So you, you basically, so that is going to be your, what you're going to be getting from the FAA. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be getting that um, exemption approval and this, the certificate of, uh, to basically operate a drone, a uh, spraying drone. So you've got that portion from the FAA. Mm -hmm. You've got the 107 that you have to get, and that's spelled out. That's, you know, already set. You know, you, you know what to study you know how to take it that kind of stuff um and then the probably the third component would be the uh pesticide so right you have to get and and a lot of guys that are in agriculture especially you know maybe the private guys um that are doing farming they've got a general standards at least mm -hmm. and what that'll allow you to do it'll allow you to use restricted use pesticides or rups um on your farm or you know, a property that, you know, maybe you don't own the farm, but it, you're leasing that land. Right. So it's a vested interest, you know, you have. Right, that you own part, part of it. Yeah. Right. And so that's the uh, private applicator. But if you're going to then do that for other people, you're going to have to go on to the commercial yeah. application. So then that could be different. In in Illinois, basically, they've got a general standards, you know, right. manual that you, you study for, you take the test. If you want to do commercial, then they have like 11 different modules, anything from literally uh, the crop spraying kind of manual right. um, to field crops to fruit, you know, vegetable type stuff, you know. So it's basically understanding how to treat the diseases or pests on a particular plant. Okay. So... There's a lot to go through with that, though, too. And, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, that's the thing. And that's why we've created this little document, right? right. Is yeah. to give people easy steps on how to get this. So just so I understand, yeah. uh, I'm just pretending like I don't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. um, how many steps did you just go through there and that? So, Was I that mean, step I, one? Well, I would, get, I would say that that's, that would be the certifications that you need. Yeah. And along the way, there is a bunch of paperwork that you have to fill out. So, um, you, you, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do these in order. You know, people, right. people call us and say, do I have to um, buy the drone first, then go for the exemption and everything? And we're like, no. You, I mean, you have to state in your petition, you have to state what drone you want to use. Right. Um, and we've seen ones where it's just a particular drone. Some people have tried to put, you know, multiple drones in, um, you know, and, and still I'm not sure what the best way of going. You know, sometimes you think, okay, I'll put two drones in because I think I want this one, but this one might be the one that I end up getting when I finally do it. But, right. So you have to kind of, you know, say which drone you're using, um, but the big determinant on, you know, which one am I going to pick is like, if it's over 55 pounds and you're going to have to kind of do a different, um, set of, of rules, guidelines essentially. Rules, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so, so we have, you know, get legal. Mm -hmm. And so that, that has to do with 107, the 137, your, um, your pesticide type stuff. Um, and we have information on like, you know, okay, if you need to schedule your exam, you know, where do I go? You know, the IACRA, uh, um, you basically do an IACRA account. Um, and then if you look down at step two, getting authorized to spray, let's understand how to be authorized to legally spray. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, what, it, what am I using? So I'm sure you're aware that there's, there is a 55 pound threshold. Yeah. Um, that's going to change things if you go over that. Um, and this, the schedule and the inspection. So that's, that's after, after you've gotten your 137 back. So you've sent your petition in, they've looked at it. They said, okay, you know, your parameters are, are all set. We approve you from there. So that's coming from basically, you know, federal FAA. Right then once you get that from federal that basically approves that you're still not technically completely ready, ready yet you got to contact your flight standard district office or your local um fa fisdo right they will then you, you'll basically set up an appointment with them do some paperwork they'll want to do your check ride so basically they do a check ride for airplanes mm -hmm. um this check ride is going to be probably a little bit easier because, right <laughs> you know it's obviously easier to fly a drone than a plane yep uh dr drones are you know much more controllable you know you can kind of turn them on a dime um but they're going to want to see like you know what happens if you have a lost link you know basically turn your remote right and off. if you lost your remote control what are you going to do right right yeah so you turn the remote off turn it back on um, pretend there's something in the way you need to land right away. Um, you're going to be doing certain passes and whatnot. Uh, and then if you do a commercial operation, then there's one step further where they'll actually want to see. Now, this is where I think it could be. I, I would like to see what what um, I'm not exactly sure how it works. Yeah, I mean, I know how so. In in our case, we brought them in. They saw the our, our operation, right? Yeah, and they, right. So so it's basically they want to see like your where's your base, mm -hmm. you know, uh, business, and then and then where's your aircraft, right? But the base uh, system, I've talked to people and like you know what I'm thinking about doing is doing a six by eight trailer, ten by twelve trailer, uh, enclosed. So it's going to house all the drones. It has the battery. The you know. All this kind of stuff, right? They'll probably want to see that because yeah, that, that would be your basically part of your operation, mobile office. Yeah, right, right. So, um, let's move on to. The but board. really, I mean, this is this is something that people need to kind of go through to get a, a better idea and to understand or to to kind of figure out what how do I want my operation to look? Yeah. If, you know, what, what I want, what do I want to accomplish with something like this? And it's like you said, it's key to also be thinking like, aside from what you want to do, it's, you know, what is going to make the FAA happy? Right. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of, you have to factor that in because. Yeah. You know, and, and, and yeah, kind of coming back to like, you know, do I put multiple drones and all that kind of stuff? The more, the more specific you are, Right. It's the easier gonna it's going to be easier for anybody to, okay, okay, this is exactly what he wants to do. Right. Versus uh, this person might use this drone, might use this drone. You know, if, if you're going to put multiple things in, it's just good to spell things out. Yeah, right. Exactly. Know? Yeah. So. The, mo the more specific you can be with the FAA, the better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me switch us back over here. And then at the bottom, there is a comprehensive list of links that we have so um some of the big ones that i kind of pulled up were the dispensing chemicals and agricultural products so this is straight from the faa i mean we didn't we wanted to kind of give our broad overview but we also wanted to give facts not just take facts that we know and then pack them into our own this is straight from the faa um and it basically talks about what what is an agricultural operation, right? You know, I want to make sure though that we actually spell the steps out because I think we, everything's getting jumbled together. So before we go, we need to say step one. Sure. This is our headline. Step two. This is what it is. Step yeah. three. This is because I think we just jumped from two to six to the end of the document. <laughs> um, at least I think we did. So let's make sure we're looking at. Yeah, I mean, well, and like I said, you know, we have steps in here, but that doesn't mean to say that somebody doesn't you know they might already have one of their steps completed right but i think we're going over the document we've got now yeah. so i yeah i would just say let's go over the the steps in general and okay. people can move them around however they want sure but yeah so step one is getting getting legal 
Right. And then, you know, we talk about understanding why you need a license. And I think we kind of went over that. Yep. I mean, the main reason is you're, you're in the airspace. Um, so this getting legal is get, you're going to need your 107 certi- certification, your 137 certification. Um, probably the easiest thing to start with, I would say, is the 107. Get your 107. Right. And I tell that to everybody, yeah. go out, get your 107 license, regardless if you exactly know what you're going to do for a profession. Like, right. you know, I, we just had a group of college kids here the other day uh, from Augustana College, actually, and they, uh, their professor had bought a drone, a P4 RTK uh, for the school itself. And uh, they were all asking us, like, all right, well, would you suggest we get a 107? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, if anybody, it, it's... It's like a 60 question, you know, test or whatever. And yeah. it's just as you just have to study for it. You yeah. have to study. There yeah. are tons and tons of like practice tests out there. Anybody that's looking to get in any sort of profession, if you can do the 107, you should, because it's yeah. cheap and it's relatively easy to pass. Right. And it can only make your resume look a little bit better. So yeah. that would be my suggestion. I, I yeah, completely agree with that. Yeah. Um, Good. Because <laughs> this is going to be a really <laughs> weird conversation if you disagreed with me on that. Why are we doing that? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so step two. Step two. So, yeah, and then step one, obviously, if you if you fail, you, you basically wait two weeks. Right. Uh, this is... You're 107. 107. Yeah. Um, yeah. So get step two, get authorized to spray. So this is where you're, we're going to be getting into... You got the 107. We know we want to spray, so you want to go through the 137 portion. Right, right. Now you have to ask yourself the question, what drone do I want to use or at what weight? Yeah. You know? um, most likely, if you're wanting to spray, it's going to be – they've they've – they've authorized more drones under 55 than they have over so something so, like this which if you're watching us you can see it in the background here it's the the dji aggress t10 is if it's got its eight liter tank on it it yeah. is just under 55 pounds yeah so it is going to be it is going to be relatively easier to um to get it your 137 for that yeah I, um and i i think it probably should be faster yeah you know just because it's 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 it seems to be less less paperwork and less intensive right um let's see so that's where you kind of under step two in the second box it says ensure you're aware of 55 pound threshold so which one am i going to do yeah <clears throat> um and for those so, of you guys that are commenting we'll get to, we'll get through we'll go through this real quick and we'll come back and answer some questions yeah um you know once you, and then we talked about once you get your um your certificate from the FAA federal, um, you'll get that. And that's when you'll do the scheduling, the inspection and, uh, you know, hook it up with the, the FISDO. Right. Um, and they'll, and they'll kind of help you along the way. Like, um, I mean, honestly, when we first went for ours, uh, there were, you know, six people in the room, right. everybody was, you know, real nice. Everybody was cool. Uh, three other people came in just to see, you know what this was going to be like yeah because you know honestly they were like you know what this is new for us we haven't we haven't approved one of these yet um <laughs> we're going to be learning together right and i was like okay great well, and that was for the mg1 series yeah. right yeah and that yeah. was a while ago too yeah it was yeah. yeah so that was under you know under 55 mm -hmm. and um and then so made an appointment with them we've got our um 137 back then you know we scheduled the flight um after that there was you know some you're going to be going back and forth right you know, it's not super guys. easy right yeah. i mean it's going to take some time right. to basically work with the faa to to figure out exactly what they want right right yeah yeah and 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 you know we always try to add to the, the point where um you know, you, you do have to do your own research as well because since things are newer, right, to this whole industry, um, things change too. Yeah, so, and and you know, we'll we'll try to keep up on that. And the other thing too, pesticide laws are different in other um, other states. Other states, yeah. Like when we we were talking about, okay, let's see, you know, let's get somebody 
that wants to do a drone spray or they want to they want to you know eventually spray well how, how can they start now right and still not feel like they're sitting on a 55 pound spraying drone and not being able to use it for a year and we kind of talked about like the spreader yeah kind of stuff, right maybe being being able to use it for you know scouting a little bit if there was a way to you know mount some type of a better uh, uh camera on there multi-spectral or something right. like that then which you know you'd think you could probably do yeah you, yeah most of those are external power sources anyways they've got built-in gps type stuff yeah um so you know there's things to think about yeah uh so now we'll and, and as you can see, there's scheduling resources. There's different stuff like, okay, you want to read the whole 137 PDF? You, you Go can, for it. You, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be reading it online. Right. Um, and then we come down to step three. Uh, a lot of people that are in, uh, you know, in our agriculture, I mean, it's it's basically, you know, you're, you're going to be using some type of combination of, uh you know, products that help uh, your plants grow better or right. disease free or whatever. So, you they probably know you know a hell of a lot more than we do about this. So, uh, but it's something that they have to know um, because you're now not just putting that uh, that pesticide or fungicide in a ground sprayer. You're now putting it in an aircraft, right? And you have to basically fly accordingly and and you know we've talked about this too like it, this sounds like a lot and i know it does yeah, you know it, it sounds like a bunch of steps to jump through and it, and it is and we you know you specifically have gone through the steps and yeah. made that happen for aerial influence uh but it, it is it's a lot of work to to get to the end of this and be you know be able to to get the get it up in the air and spray yeah. which is one of the things that we offer so we you know full disclosure like one of the things we offer is to help you walk through this process yeah you know which i think is probably step four uh i'm just guessing um, uh, i think it is this, right this is what we're here for and this is what we're here for <laughs> <laughs> now the fun part begins <laughs> that's right <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean look whether you use us or they use somebody else i think the point is uh you know that that you need to have somebody that knows what they're doing yeah. and has been through this before. There are, you know, we don't want to be uh, one of those places necessarily that's just going to sell a spring drone off the shelf yeah. to somebody because there are so many hoops that, that you have to jump through to, to eventually get legal. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, everything, I mean, even something that is, you know, these are relatively simple, simple to operate. Right. Oh, totally. Um, but can you, you know, I mean, but you can also be destructive with them if you don't know what you're doing, if you're, you know, messing around or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah. there's what I'm saying is that, yes, everything is learnable, everything you can do. Um, you just kind of have to stay take it step by step and, and nothing's going to happen overnight that's yeah sure. right and, and, and if you plan for it then maybe so the easiest part of it is the drone like yeah. you know we tell people uh, that if you can fly a mavic mini you can fly one of these big drones whether yeah. it's the t10 or t now it's a bigger drone it's going to feel a lot scarier yeah. but you're going to get the controls down and that's really the genius of dji is that's sort of across the board for all of their drones yeah are they fly the exact same way so uh that's you know one of the one of the great things but the whole point of all of this is that people like us exist mm -hmm. to help you if this is the route you're gonna go down the line right. and and there are others even if you don't use us like you know there's yeah. not a lot of us but even if you don't use us you're probably gonna save yourself a lot of time and headaches yeah uh, by using somebody that has been through the process before. So, right. yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, or you might find that, okay, you know, if it, it depending on when you start doing it. And if you, if you have an idea of when you want to use this, right. You really need to start planning. Start now. Like yeah. if you're wanting to use this next fall yeah. or next spring, sorry, yeah, yeah. To, you should be calling somebody like us today, exactly. you know, right. um, because, it takes a lot of time and it yeah. like you said it's going to be quicker likely let me put this thing back up but it's going to be quicker uh you know likely to do a t10 than it is to do a t30 the t30 is over 55 pounds or a t20 even it's going to take time right to yeah. get that approved whereas the t10 you could you know 
what you're looking at three to six months, maybe hopefully I mean, three months, but you yeah, know. I mean, it, uh, again, you know, COVID kind of knocked is, everything out. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the, the, our, our first one, I think it was 87 days. Right. Uh, and that's the one that got approved. That that's the one that got approved. And then we also helped another person, uh, get approved. I think it was right around the 87, maybe a few, maybe more, a couple days the, longer, the nineties, um, working with another person, uh, our, our own as well. We're still waiting on those. Those are the over 55. The, yeah, those just, I think they big bottleneck. Yeah. Right. Yeah, especially for, like you said, the, the bigger ones, the T30 and T20. Yeah. It's taken a while. We still have one in for our T16 and it's been a long time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, basically step four was, you know, kind of, you know, getting your drone. And, 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 and the thing is that might mean that, uh, you're going to use something in addition to a spraying drone. Maybe it's a multi-spectrum, maybe it's the, uh, the fan four RTK or maybe an M 300 type stuff. Well, and that's one of the things like the other day I was talking to those students again and was trying to, you know, cause none of them had ever seen a T 30, of course, like, you know, nobody's not that many people have seen them in person at, at this point. Um, but uh now i totally forgot what i was talking about i was going to tell the oh. students something and uh, uh, no i don't have it well, anyways let's go on to step five sorry right? let's move to step five <laughs> man i'm an idiot oh it's my Friday. gosh i know all right here we are switching back there we go sorry, um, sorry everybody step five you got your drone now let's train on it so um this is when you're you're going to be diving into kind of their operate the operating system of the drone um, figuring out how um, you're going to be able to do the things that you're already doing, but maybe with a drone, right? And how that's going to. And, and we work. strongly, we strongly encourage, uh, you know, training drones. So yeah. something like the DJI, like the Mavic Mini Two or the the, the original Mavic Mini, something that if you crash it, it's going to be four or five hundred bucks instead right. of your big, beautiful new drone. I know what I was going to say now. So I uh, was basically telling them how powerful each drone was by themselves, yep. but how when you pair, pair like the multi-spectral with DJI Terra or Pix4D right. uh, along with the the spraying drones, that's where it really, yeah. really, you know, you're seeing the full power of what this technology right, can do. Right, then, because then you could be saving uh, money on the amount of product you're putting down yeah um you might not you might have have a better idea exactly where your problems er, areas are and the reason why you're putting on less is because you're really hitting a those problem areas and maybe a little bit of uh overlap um so you're not necessarily just blanking the whole thing yeah um and it or or you maybe you do a blanket with you know a ground rig and you've got little uh, spots you can't get to or whatever that yeah. you know so. you might be able to use a drone for um all right so what we got one uh, one step left here yeah so um yeah i mean step six is you know stay, stay on top to of your drone knowledge i mean that's yeah. that's that's always key um because things change and uh and that's something i think that people like us um you know we can help with because this is what we're doing here on the podcast is basically trying to keep everybody up to date. You know, yeah. it's keeping both of us probably on our toes a little bit, especially you with the ag oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but part of educating yourself and staying up to date is following people that are in the industry. And, yeah. you know, right now this is kind of what we eat, sleep and breathe is the drone industry. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, subscribe all that kind of good stuff obviously uh we would love gonna, for you to do that but i was gonna add um i'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do next week but and maybe we will but uh right i think the week after that or at least in the next two to three weeks um kind of a little teaser we're going to be actually hooking up with someone that really knows what they're doing yeah. in the farm world yep and uh so it's it's so it's it's where droners that like farming meet farmers that like droning, droning. it's amazing <laughs> so, so, yeah so, so we gotta we're putting that together and hopefully uh we can come up with even better information and, and, and maybe some very specifics on, okay, you know, every, everybody has like, you know, T30, they say, 
40 acres per hour. Right, right. And 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 if you if if you don't know by now, um it's relative. Right. Because of course. you don't know what yeah. your gallon per acre is. Maybe one product you have to put down you know, three or more, one, you might uh, put down one gallon. Acre. And when you do that with a drone that is literally carrying, you know, under 10 gallons, mm -hmm. that makes a difference on your, <laughs> on your per hour yeah. uh, amount of acreage you can do. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, that's like, you know, I think with all of the drones, they'll give them a approximate flight time, yeah. you know, but it's always the optimal, you know, it's always the optimal conditions. So you always got to, you know, yeah. adjust that logically for and, and I think, re reality. I, mean, I think for the most part, I mean, I think farmers would know that yeah. even more like, right. well, come on. You can't say forty uh, if 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 I put down three and the other guy puts down two, right? <laughs> uh, then yeah, the guy that puts down two is going to be able to get more acres than I am. So right, right. It it is dependent on probably what your crop is and all that kind of stuff. And even flight time, you know, they say like twelve minutes, you know, yeah. typically for your flight time, but it depends on how how much you've got yeah. weighted on the thing and what the wind speeds are and how fast you're flying and all the other different things. Right. That I mean, even like you've got a long field, um, it's better to do long passes rather yeah. than a bunch of short passes because every time it's turning, it, it basically is going from one direction to another changing directions. That's taking a lot. That's sucking the battery every time you yeah. do that. Every pass. time you turn. So we do have a busy, a busy week coming up and i think we can say who we're talking because we're going to end up doing videos and stuff uh, yeah. coming up anyway but so what uh either sunday or monday we're going to missouri to deliver a spraying drone yeah. uh then we're going to the university of missouri they're getting a t20 20, correct right. yeah, yeah so the university of missouri is going to have it go mizzou um and then uh thursday and friday we are working uh, who are we working with again? We're, 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 the hard brothers. brothers yeah, yeah there you go yeah. i'm so yeah. sorry they're yeah. watching too <laughs> yeah. and i totally blanked i totally blanked so yeah. the hard time bro well, brothers they're, sorry yeah no I was, yeah it's uh, th yeah we're gonna be working with them they're they're, they're awesome great. customers of yeah. ours and friends of ours and yeah. so we're gonna go with them to wisconsin we're gonna do some tests with some different drones so yeah excited about that as well before we go i want to make sure there were a couple of uh comments uh actually there's one real question here uh but uh, i believe jana is your name thank you for watching from belarus yeah they're very cool awesome. get, we get people yeah. from all over the place watching so Welcome. we appreciate that uh mook millie says and i haven't read this first so i'm gonna just read it live hey guys is it better to start a service providing company for spraying and inspection or a company that sells drones to farmers direct thank you so okay. is it more important is it better to start a service providing company for spraying and inspecting or a company that sells drones to farmers direct. So we, we can only tell you one side right now. We are, I mean, I guess we've yeah. done some drones for service. Actually, too. I'd, I'd say a third one. I mean, the, the, so if you're starting a drone service company, right. um, I mean, are you, are you in the industry, you know? Right. Because that, that, that would make, I think a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, what okay. kind of service are you offering? All, yeah. all and, of that. And, 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 and who do you, who, who do you know? I mean, is that something in your background? Uh, because if it's not, then maybe going directly to the companies that offer spraying services. Right. You know, because you'll have companies that will hook up with farmers. <clears throat> the farmer says, I've got X amount of acres. Um, this you know maybe that farmer used a crop consultant and the crop consultant says here's your here's your plan right and then they hand the plan to you know the spraying company and the spraying company will maybe they have a combination of ground rigs and backpack sprayers but then they also outsource uh you know airplanes um so that company is essentially being hired by the farmer the company that's being hired by the farmer is hiring a uh 137 pilot to fly over and spray so together you know obviously right. the farmer just bills the one guy but so maybe uh you know a third option would be going to the companies that offer that service and saying look 
I have um, a drone. I want to, you know, if you guys want to hire me out, here's my, my rate. You right. Know? Yeah. Or, or, you know, go to the companies first, Yeah. you know, and, yep. and, and, uh, see if there's, you know, something that you can fill for them that would make it economical for them to say, yeah, let's, let's add this. Right. Um, yeah. So. And, you know, and I think in terms of being a drone dealer, that's something we could write a whole book about one day down yeah. when we're older. Yeah. But, um, you know, you got to think about the realities of that too. It's like, where am I going to get my demo units? How mm. am I going to pay for them? How am I going to do that? You know, there's a whole lot. To, how, yeah. you know, who's going to do sales, marketing, all this stuff that goes into it. So there's yeah. a lot more that goes into it than just, you know, selling drones to people um you right. got to learn how to use all these drones in terms of you know if you're using a matrice 300 uh while it flies the same as something like an agras mm -hmm. uh you know you still have to learn how to use it for different reasons right. yeah and some have different kind of operating systems and yeah faces and stuff and it's yeah. like you said like so somebody so if you were to go out and wanted to start a, a consulting business or a, a business where you're using a p4 multispectral like you said, if you don't know how to read that, the 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 information that it spits out, yeah, it doesn't do anybody any good. So you yeah. have to then work with you know uh, a crop analyst that is going to be able to tell you what that information means. They right. can then tell the farmer, blah blah blah. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into it when when you think about any of these any of these uh, ways to go because we're so early in the industry. Right, it's hard to say. Here's what the best route for you is to go because. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, and he, he, he talks about, you know, being a service provider. I mean, I, I would go one step further and say, if if you think you're just going to be a service provider for a farmer, then I, I would probably think a little bit more because there are some right. huge far, farming operations that even if a guy says, yeah, I'm, a, you know, in agriculture, I mean, there could be a... a that guy might not know how to really grow crops. <laughs> right. You know what right, I mean? I mean right. there are probably there are so many different segments sectors within, of agriculture. Yeah, within agriculture, within mm -hmm. in, in any industry. So um, you know, maybe he needs to hook up with crop consultants and say, look, you know, I can give you some added information that uh, you know, would definitely help in marketing, you know, because it's you, you got pretty picture. Yeah. Um, pretty maps and that kind of stuff. But, you know, on top of that, you know, someone that can actually, you know, read that stuff and say, okay, this is a problem area, go out and ground truth that that, that has some real value. Yes. Um, so it, it kind of serves two purposes, you know, one for actual data and one for, you know, pretty marketing material. Yeah. So, um, also, yeah, great question. I, I mean, we could, uh, we could sit and talk about this for long. I think you were anticipating this to be one of our shorter sessions. It's actually, <laughs> we're at 38 minutes. This might be one of our longer ones. <laughs> right, right, right. I just, I'm trying to suck information out of you. Yeah, just yeah, trying to yeah. suck it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like was, I was with a lot of kids. I know, I know you were, I know you were, you were a busy guy. So uh, we should, we should clarify that yeah. too. I, I, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was on chaperoning a, your yeah, son's chap, yeah. field trip. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fifth, fifth bunch of fifth graders running around and yeah. at a camp and yeah. It's a lot of work. Just had to corral them. Yeah. 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 It's fun though. Uh, but thank you guys all for watching us. Thank you for always, you know, we have the same, a yeah. lot of the same people that are coming back each week and we appreciate yeah. that. I know Michael says we won't get podcast next week. I'm going to do my best to see if we okay, can well, uh, yeah, sit down for a session. We could do it on the road or something. Yeah, exactly. We got lots of ideas. I know you, yeah, and, 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 and you I, I want to, I want to keep yeah. adding to this and kind of like, you know, two weeks ago we got some people, uh, you know, writing in about, you know, when we asked them a question, like, what, what do you think the FAA wants to see you know, right. to, to help approve these things faster or, you know, cause sometimes data just isn't good. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> in a tight little bundle. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry guys. Oh, he's going to um, call. All right. We're, we got to go anyway, but thank you guys so Friday. much for watching. Happy Friday. Uh, like we said, go to the website, download, uh, enter your email, download, you know, then you'll, you'll be able to see the agricultural roadmap if you haven't, or the journey map, sorry, uh, <laughs> if you haven't done so already. So, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. All right. Yes. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. See ya.